Everybody just relax for a minute while I get my act together. You know, I got to be honest with you. I, I get nervous every Sunday morning. I am a nervous wreck. And I don't know. I, I know this doesn't come from God. But, you know, you're trying to do God's will, and you got this opposition, and phew. I'm thankful for each and every one of you. Maybe I can calm myself down by just saying how grateful I am. Each and every one of you, I, I can look right at you and just be grateful for your part in this church, for your part in this this expanding the kingdom of God, what you do for the church, how you support the church, us as a family. Thank you. I am grateful. We don't oftentimes take a minute and just say thank you. That's what we're going to do today. This whole fear thing, it works in me and it works in everybody else. And I don't see it as part of God's plan. As a matter of fact, when fear changes your quality of life, you are controlled by it. When fear becomes the new norm in our lives, it will control the world. When God changes your quality of life, he is in control of it. When God changes the new norm of the world, it will follow him and be like him, and we will be a better place. Phew, the fears may be leaving me now. You bring me comfort. You see, just thank you for bringing me comfort. If somebody's new in here, I'm sorry. We, we are a family. We're supposed to be a family. And sometimes I just say it like it is, and I'm nervous. Obviously, there's some part of this that doesn't, the opposition doesn't want me to say. Anyway, um, let's, let's talk about fear for a minute, because it's on my mind. There's a huge misconception of having no fear and being a fool. You know, we, we say that, that fear is not from God, in fact, 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but one of power and of love and of a sound mind. This fear thing starts to control our way of life, our quality of life. And you guys give me peace. Coming together, like-minded people, all in one place, do you, do you understand how powerful that can be? You know, you sit around and you pray and you're all by yourself, but when two people get together and pray, it becomes something special. And when three people sit around and pray, pretty soon you get a group of people together. That is some powerful stuff. And there is no place for fear in there. But we seem to be scared these days. I almost said a word I shouldn't say. It makes me mad because I know it's not part of God's plan. And it's beginning to change the quality of life for people. It's beginning to be the new norm. And it's not from God. Is God proud of us? Is God proud of the way that we're acting? You know, in my prayer, I said we come together united, patriots of the free world. You think he's proud of the way that we're acting? I'm not trying to turn this into any political thing. I'm trying to get you to release some fear, and I deal with it all the time. And I tell you, some of the, some of the worst things I do, now you guys are probably all going to do this to me because I'm going to confess this. Somebody will say, hey, you got a few minutes, I'm going to stop by and talk. Oh, I just assume I did something wrong, right? You, you ever get called to the principal's office and he tells you you did something good? No, right? So somebody will say, hey, I want to stop by for a couple minutes. And I, I got to tell you about one of them, just how wrong I was. 
I had somebody say, hey, you got a couple minutes this week, I wanna stop by and stuff, and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, what did I do? I said something you didn't like, and, and I had one other person, and I actually went up to them and said, okay, you gotta tell me if I did something wrong. No, didn't do anything wrong, but they still didn't tell me what they wanted to talk about. I got fear going. I do. I'm a, I, I want to please people, right? I got you. You say, hey, you got a few minutes, and I'll stop by. And, oh my God, what, what have I done? That's not from God. Well, had somebody do that to me? Uh, I think a week before last, and I saw him pull in, and I'm just all these things going on in my head. I just love him so much. I don't want to make him mad. I don't want to upset him. And they handed me a gift and said, I just made this for you. Just wanted to say thank you. Whew. I, I had this guilt going through me that I was thinking all these things that I know wasn't from God. And it turned out they actually just wanted to say thank you and give me something. And it wasn't Oreos. <laughs> Though that's what I shoot for. <laughs> but it was pretty cool. This fear that we got going on is not part of God's plan. In fact, all it does is want to disrupt the plan. But yet we have to deal with it. And, and the, the reason I said I don't want you to get mixed up between fear and just being a fool is sometimes when I say we don't need fear in our lives, well, yeah, there's times when fear is going to save your life. Let's not be a fool. You can't stand in front of a train and say, I'm not afraid. It'll be the last time you say that. That's just being a fool. But the fear that's in us is not from God. And I think that we need to try to get a hold of it somehow. And I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do this. But our country is scattered all over. Some people are really afraid, some people aren't afraid, and they're, they're, they can't seem to come together and be united patriots of the greatest country in the world. We're torn apart. And I want to try to make some sense out of all this for you. Do you think God's proud of us? You think God's proud of how we're handling things? in our life, in our country? God cannot be moved. And we're not supposed to be either. But yet, boy, does fear move us. We get a little scared, a little nervous. What's going to happen? How's this all going to work? What about my kids? And pretty soon, it moves us. It moves us in a direction that is not godly. In how you're behaving, not any of you guys, you're all good. I'm talking to those people that are watching online and half of them are good. <laughs> but seriously, if, if God were to show up in your house, would he say, I'm really proud of the way you're handling this world that we're in? I hope he's to say that. But I'm concerned maybe he's not. Because we're having fear actually change our quality of life. And I, and I feel for the kids going back to school. They, they are going to, you know, some of you aren't going to like this, but they are going to now have a new norm of don't touch each other, don't hug each other. And, and yeah, I get it. Let's not be a fool. But the fear is changing the quality of life for them probably more than us. Is he proud of that? Is God proud of his people? How about you guys? I don't have any slides to put up on the screen because I just want to listen. I just want you to listen, and I just want to talk. I want you to relax. In the book of Acts, Luke writes the book of Acts, and he's actually quoting David here, and it says, For David said concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is at my right hand, 
that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart rejoices, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh also will rest in hope. Are you guys being shaken? God's not moved, but we sure are. We're changing everything. Fearful? A fool. Don't be stupid. Psalm 62, written by David, of course, as well. Not only is my rock, I'm sorry, he is not only my rock and salvation, he is my defense. I shall not be moved. Are you moved? Your quality of life changing? For the good, right? Or is it? Not telling you to do anything stupid. We say that here. Some stuff's just stupid. But to live by fear, changing the quality of life, changing our norm is not from God. So who is it from? And are you part of it? I don't mind being afraid. I've been afraid a lot. Didn't stop me from doing some of the stuff that I knew I should be doing. But I was afraid. I don't know whether we can actually stop from being afraid. But we can control our actions from it. It's not going to stop me from coming up here and talking about Jesus. Maybe it's a little opposition to try to make a new norm. You see, break up the church. Got to take out the head. Not that I'm the head of a church. I'm... Now that's just stupid. Are you guys afraid? Don't, don't raise your hands. No, I don't I want, I want you to shout out or not. I just want to have you ask yourself whether fear is changing my quality of life and is it becoming the new norm? And am I going to allow it in my family, in my place of business, in my community? We're not going to do anything stupid. But in your own mind, is fear changing you? It's quite a plan, you know. If you've got a whole bunch of like-minded people together, they are so, so powerful. And you get one person amongst them that says, hey, we can't do this. Now, you understand he's going to send a couple spies out into uh, Canaan. Is that what it was? The promised land to spy out what's going on. Joshua sending them over there. And one of them comes back and says, oh, my God, there's giants over there. We can't do that. New plan. We've got to do new, a new plan. And, of course, one of them says, we got this. Which one are you? Fear was controlling one of them, and God was controlling the other one. We got this, but we got to do it in the right way. We got to have a plan. But we're not going to be fearful about it, because God is in control. We are made in the image of God. And I want you to think about what this means to you. And I want you to actually put it into context. He's, he's creating the world. And during his creation, he's making the animals and everything. And he says, hey, let's make man. And let's make him in our own image. Now, right there should let you know that he's going to separate us from his creation before. We're going to be different than the others. So he had got done creating animals, now he's going to make somebody in our own image. Now, obviously, God does not look like this, right? I'm just going to confess that God is not a fat, bearded, bald <laughs> man who doesn't always say the right things, and right? Maybe he looks now, let me... <laughs> it's not about physical. Okay? It's not about physical. Keep this in context. He's making creation, and he says, let's make man in our own image. These are the things that are of his image. And it's different than us. You know, uh, I don't know how many times Kelly has said something to Abby and said, you're just like your father. Right? She doesn't look like me, but she acts like me. 
She is in my likeness. Well, Kelly got a little bit in there too, <laughs> right? All was going well until Kelly put a dress on her one day. I had her racing <laughs> motorcycles and we had all these toys and, and I'd take her out in the woods and teach her how to do stuff and one day she put a dress on and it was over. <laughs> but yet, she's still like me. I don't wear dresses. She wears a dress once in a while, but she's still in my image. We have a spirit that all the other creation that he had done did not. It's because he is spirit. We are intelligent. It separates us from the animals in his likeness because he is intelligent. We know right from wrong. So does God. It's in his likeness that we know right from wrong, besides away from the tree. He has emotion. So we would have emotion. He has love, therefore we have love. He has compassion, therefore we have compassion. He has mercy, so we have mercy. He gives grace, therefore we give grace. You understand the likeness now? Nothing else he created was like this. We are created in his likeness. Some of your paraphrases will say image, but it says that we are created in his likeness. Show me fear. Fear is not part of the likeness of God. If you have fear, you know it's not from God because we're made in his image, and fear is not in God's image. So every time we get fear, we have to realize it's from something else. Just like when I walk up here, you think there isn't some opposition for me to talk to you about this stuff? It's not from God, but yet I'm not shaken. Oh, a little bit. <laughs> you are made in the likeness of God, and fear is not part of that likeness. Nowhere will you find that. So where is it from? You decide. But if you are going to be like-minded, fear is not going to be part of it. Oftentimes we want confirmation. Hey, I think we should be doing this. If we find one person that thinks like the way we do, we think it's all good. We've just justified the way that we feel. You know, a while back I told you about the first person to pick up a brick. If somebody would have just said, dude, put the brick down, we're not going there. But instead, instead they said, hey, you got one for me? Now we got confirmation. And fear's the same way. Fear builds fear over and over and over again. And it is not part of the likeness of God. If you're created in God's image, fear is not part of it. You know, God was even sorry for what he'd done. Let's look at some of these things, some of the likenesses that we have of God. The love. He was even sorry. He has emotion. And he wiped them out to start over again. How'd that work? You are created in God's image. And some of these things that we're dealing with and going through are not part of the likeness of God. And the biggest one is probably fear. Don't get confused. Fear with being a fool. But you know, you have control. I've talked about this before. The church is not in this building. And you actually have your own little church at home. Your own little family, your own little community, the group of people you hang with, that you run with, whatever the word I'm looking for is there. It's your church. And you're the leader of it. And you have other people appoint leaders. If you're married, you now have, have a spouse. Now you have two leaders, and they get together, and they have meetings. And this is what we're going to do, and this is what we're not going to do. But, you know, do you actually take that out to people and say, well, this is how we do it, so this is how you should do it? With this whole like-minded thing, we want people to agree with us. This is what we're going to do. And we try to influence them. And we'll actually influence them with fear. That's not part of God's plan. You know, Christians fall into this trap just as bad as everybody else. 
Fear rules. Change your quality of life. Change the way you do everything. God is not in control when fear is changing the quality of our life. Let's not be a fool. But I want you to know that it's not from God. Even the Holy Spirit does not have the likeness of fear. He might give you the conviction to flee. He might give you the conviction that this is wrong. But I don't see anywhere where it says, hey, here's a conviction. Uh, I want you to debate that guy over there and try to get him as scared as you are, and then the world will be a better place. Yeah, be really scared and get a bunch of people together and tell them how scared you are, and then see if you can influence them into being scared, and that way we can, we can change a lot of things. I can't find that. But I can find where he says, everybody come together and be like-minded. Break bread together, share together, worship together, pray together. Then you can change the world. How you doing? God proud of you? Like any wise father, God wants us to learn to be thankful for all the gifts he has given us. Can you just be thankful? That is part of God's image. That's part of the likeness of God. Regardless of what the situation is, I'm thankful for all you guys, regardless of how you think or feel or what side you're on. I'm thankful for you. And you know, we're not doing enough of this. And it's one of the easiest things to do. We love to get together and talk about all this kind of stuff that's separating our country, that's dividing our friends. What I want you to do today is just be thankful. This is the Sabbath. And I'm sure a lot of you have got my message on, on the Sabbath. Can we just all be like-minded today for an hour Forget our differences, set them aside, and be grateful that we are alive. Be grateful that we have roof over our head. Be grateful that we have clothes. Be grateful, you're really grateful I got clothes. Be grateful we got food in our cabinet. Just for a little while today, can we just stop? Just be thankful. You know what Jesus does? Well, worship team, get ready. Um, Nancy, would you hand out my little things? Here's what Jesus does. I'm going to give you a quick Bible lesson here because I know some of you came for a Bible lesson, right? Um, when, when Jesus was picking his apostles, disciples, whatever you want to call them, uh, he picks Matthew. Matthew was a tax collector. Some of you might know him as Levi. He was a tax collector. And ta uh, Matthew is actually listed in one spot as um, being an employee of Rome because he was the tax collector. He would have been under Rome authority. Now I want you to think about this. We'll just, we'll just put this in something of our, our, our uh, culture. Uh, let's call him a Republican. Oh, this is going to be bad. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. I'll edit this part out. Simon, not Simon Peter, Simon the Zealot. Does anybody know what Zealot is, what it means? Zealot was actually a political movement. In the original text, it says that Simon the Canaanite, and it's used in a phrase there to say, uh, he's from over there. <laughs> and what they were, they, they had this zeal for this movement, this political movement they had. So we got Matthew, who was actually employed by Rome. He was the tax collector. And we have the zealot, who had this movement. We're going we're gonna to do some great things. Now, God actually wanted us to take over 
uh, Canaan, the land. Well, he was a zealot. He was very zealous for this movement. It was a political party, and it was against Rome. They hated what Rome was doing. Do you realize that this is two people from two totally different ends of the spectrum? And they came together because Jesus called them and they never mentioned it again. Jesus changed their quality of life, the way they thought, the teachings that he gave them, steered them in a different direction. Two totally different people from different spectrums came together and started to follow Jesus Christ in the same group. He sent them out to do the same thing. They set their differences aside. Can you do that today? If we start with an hour on Sunday morning, maybe we can get it so it's all day on Sunday. And then maybe if that gets to be a habit, you see, maybe we can then on Monday take it to our workplace or our groups or, or whatever. And maybe at night when we put the kids to bed, it'll spread to them. That sometimes we just need to give thanks for what we have and not be scared, not be fearful. It is not the likeness of God. What I want you to do is, uh, Nancy, uh, first of all, thank you, Nancy. See, I don't know what she thinks or where she's from. I just love her, thank you. I don't even know where she's at. The people that printed the cards, thank you. I don't know where you're at or where you're from. The people that gave those pens, by the way, take the pens home with you because we're all scared, right? We don't want to put the pens back. So take the pens home. The lady had gloves on that passed them out because we're going to set, and no, we're not. I just want you to be grateful today. For a few minutes, I want you to take that card and that envelope and that pen, and I want you to write a thank you card to God. Oh, we love to thank him, don't we? Everybody in here got a card from my wife before? I'll bet pretty close. If you're new, you'll get one tomorrow. <laughs> and, and you know what? Chad, you never got one? No, I got one. Oh, good for you. <laughs> that means we're done to talking about that. You know, what, what she does is she actually takes some time and sits down and thinks about it. And she usually put a little Bible verse in it and she'll pray over it and stuff like that. She doesn't give a rip where you're from, what you did, what your past is. She's grateful that you came to Simply Free Church. That's what I want you to do with God today. And you see, while you're writing, you'll be concentrating on this and you won't be thinking about all this other crap that's going on. So we're going to take a couple minutes and just simply write a thank you card to God for what you're grateful for. This is part of his nature. Jesus was the exact representation of God, God in the flesh, and he thanked the Father. Now you think God has never thanked anybody? Well, the race isn't over yet. We're all in this race to win. And one day, he is going to give you the thank you. And it even says in scripture that he is going to say, well done. If he's proud of you, the way you're handling things, you're made in his likeness, are you acting like him? That's when you'll get your thank you. How often do you thank somebody when the project's not done? Our race is not done yet. But him giving us thanks are the crowns that he's going to be handing out to us when the race is over. He's a thankful God. He's a loving God. Jesus was the exact representation of him in his very likeness. It says that Jesus says, I and the, and the Father are one. That's God in the flesh, and he's thankful. He thanked all the time. I think there's 36 things in the, in the Psalms that tell us, tells us we need to give thanks to God. Maybe we'll put all of our differences aside for a few minutes and thank God. And while this is going on, if you've got something against somebody in this place right now, stop it. For one hour on Sunday morning might lead to one day of a week, and it might lead to changing your quality of life. Because that's what God does when he takes control. You are made in his likeness. And fear is not part of it. Write him a thank you card, keep the pen, and keep the card, put it in the envelope, and go home and stick it in your Bible. 
because these cards that my wife writes, I don't know how many times I've heard them say, you know, I get those out and look at them once in a while. Makes me feel good. Stick your thank you card to God. You don't have to mail it to him. He knows what it says. Stick it in your Bible. If you don't have a Bible, we'll get you one. Stick it in there. And every once in a while, say, you know what? I am thankful. Next time you open up that book and try to find something to justify how you're feeling, just be thankful. Let's take five minutes and just be thankful. Abby will watch how you guys are writing your cards when everybody's about done. She's going to sing a song that's just all about being thankful. We're just going to worship God together. I don't care about your past. I don't care what party you're from. I don't care what you think or, well, maybe a little bit. Can we just be in the image of God, His likeness, and start acting like Him? If you're not thankful for Jesus, you're missing the point. He hung on the cross for each and every one of us, whether we're scared, whether we're driven by fear, whether we're not scared, whether we're sinners or not, of course you all are. You know what the cost was? Can you get together, be like-minded people, to thank the one that paid the price for you for an hour, for a day? Maybe it'll go into next week with a little luck. I've been sending out midweek reminders because people can't remember on Wednesday what the message was about on Sunday. Maybe you remember this one. You should be thankful for Jesus Christ just that simple. And one day, when the race is over, you're going to receive the crown, you're going to get the well done thank you, you're going to get all the thank yous you've ever worked for, worked for, achieved, strive, whatever you want to call it, because the race isn't over yet. That's when you're going to get your thank you. But it's part of the likeness of God to simply worship, to simply be grateful, to simply love people, to simply have grace with people, to have mercy with people. We all want it, but we don't want to give it to everybody else. Especially if they don't think the way we think. Let's start to be more like-minded. Take your thank you cards, stick them in your Bible, add to them, whatever you want to do. You see, it took just a little bit of effort, didn't it? When you write somebody a thank you card, you actually put some effort into it. You put some thought into it. I can say thank you, God, all day long. Thank you, God. That doesn't take but a second. Thank you, God. Second, thank you, God. But to sit down and write actually puts some effort into it. It puts some thought into it. Thank you for doing it. Even if you just put an X on there. It's a little effort. We should all be extremely grateful. And I want you to leave this place today, set your differences aside, whatever side of the line you're on, and be a patriot for the greatest country in the world. You guys have more than any... Oh, I'm going on a rant, aren't I? You guys are rich! But yet, we just want to dicker over authority and fear-driven things. Stop it. I am in the party of Christianity. That's the only one I need. Leave this place and be grateful. Let's pray. God, thank you. Just a huge thank you for Jesus Christ. He gave me something that I could never achieve, that I could never buy, that I could never even beg for. I'm so grateful for that love and that price that he paid. God, I want to be more like you. I want, to, I want to act more like you. Remind me all this week of how we're made in your likeness and what that likeness means. Because fear is not part of it. In Jesus' name, I thank you. Amen.